All right, so this video is gonna be a little bit different. It's still kinda gonna be a fundamentals video, which is a lot of what I do on this channel, but it's gonna be a little bit more of a fundamentals philosophy video. Let's talk. Welcome Lake M Crypto. My name is Josh and I'm here helping you make smarter investments for Lake M Gains. Remember, anything you see in any of my videos is not to be taken as financial advice. Do your own research and own your own decisions. What you're about to see in this video are thoughts from a dedicated Cardano enthusiast, obviously, and if you haven't seen my videos before, that's what I do on this channel. And I do feel like I have to preface this video with an acknowledgement that if you're from outside the Cardano community, this video might sound a little bit arrogant. With this video, I'm plenty aware of the risks of being called a Cardano maximalist or something else of that nature. I'd very much like to get ahead of that and squash it right here. I don't think that Cardano is going to be the only success in crypto, and I don't want everybody else to fail. Actually, practically quite the opposite. But I do have a lot of confidence in the future of Cardano, and I will stick to that assessment even if Cardano ended up being a scam. Let's get started. So let's humor the haters for just a second. Even though I don't reasonably think that Cardano could even be a scam, there are just too many people that are in control of different parts of the ecosystem and even a lot of pivotal functions that nobody controls. But let's just say that all of that was a lie. Let's just say that the 140 plus research papers on IOHK's website are convincingly fabricated. Let's say that Maybe the smart contracts on Cardano are just on the MVP level, and maybe all of these software upgrades that we've seen on the blockchain are all just fake. These are all obviously verifiably incorrect accusations, but at least it's more specific than the general ghost chain vaporware garbage that we get all the time. And I don't mean at all to come across as if I think that the Cardano blockchain is perfect. There's a lot of work that needs to be done before it can realize the full potential of its vision. I understand that. But to legitimately make the accusation that Cardano is an inherently bad blockchain or doesn't already have plans to address the issue that it does have, you have to do some mental gymnastics to sort of dance around those things. This, I think, is a relatively uncontroversial perspective within the Cardano community. But where I think I might differ from a lot of the community is that if Cardano did end up being a scam, I would still feel like I'm making the correct decisions right now. I mean, yes, if it did end up being the scam, I would still wish that I wouldn't have put my money there, but let me explain. Nobody can tell the future. Obvious, I know. What I'm getting at is that you can only make decisions based on the information that you have right in front of you. Since I'm sure most of our intentions are to build wealth in this space, we think that we made a wrong decision if the price doesn't go up like we think that it's supposed to, and that's not always the case. And sure, it is entirely possible that maybe we missed something, or maybe we didn't do our due diligence at all. Maybe we just got caught up in the hype and excitement of price action, but those are different circumstances than what I'm talking about here. I personally think that it would be a waste of time to second guess yourself based on the price action of a given project. Actually, not even just a waste of time. I think that it would be counterproductive to a principled and emotionless approach to investing. And that's kind of interesting if you think about it. If you isolate your measurement of success for a project based on the objective fundamentals of a project rather than price action, it does feel different. And especially when we're talking about the world of cryptocurrency, most of our attention is going to projects that are doing something new and innovative, things we haven't seen before. Which means that there's almost never tangible demonstrative proof that something works as advertised. So all we really have to work with when we're making our decisions is the research material and the technical literature and the resumes of the core team members. And that's if your core focus is an objective analysis of the fundamentals. What I'm basically getting at with all this is that 
Investing is always a risk because there's no such thing as a sure thing, especially when you're dealing with startups. And I'm going somewhere with this, I promise. Cardano, I think, has proven more than most, and I'm willing to die on that hill, figuratively. IOG, which is the company that is dedicated to growing and developing the Cardano ecosystem, they have a growing library of research papers like we talked about before. All of those documents added together contains thousands of pages of highly researched technical literature. And all of these documents were written by highly educated individuals in cryptography and mathematics and computer science and cybersecurity. And just about all of these individuals have doctorates or are currently working on getting their doctorate. Actually, quick side note, this is one of the reasons that I thought that it was really weird that Charles Hoskinson's education was a big deal at all. Charles is most definitely a talented visionary. I don't think that is replaceable. But what I'm getting at is that I really don't think that Cardano needs Charles to do any of the heavy lifting in the area of academic research. I don't really want to get too far away from the point here. Cardano is really proving itself as a reliable option in the midst of all of these collapses and shutdowns. And a lot of the people that used to be stark Cardano haters are kind of coming around now because Cardano has proven itself as a reliable, stable blockchain. And there's a bunch of developer activity happening as demonstrated by it ranking the number one of developer activity on GitHub. Here's my ultimate point of this video. If tomorrow ADA literally goes to zero and Charles disappears with billions of dollars of investors' money, I would still feel like right now, given the information that I have available to me, I'm making the right decisions. I think that you are doing something wrong if the end result of your fundamentals analysis is not bringing you to a place where you're comfortable telling people that you got scammed by a project. Because the goal is not to get scammed, or at least one of the goals, I guess. And if something looks intricate enough to fool you, you should feel comfortable saying, yeah, that looked really real at the time. If you truly are separating price from fundamentals, a massive rug pull doesn't really change the outlook of what those fundamentals could do, except for the intentions of the leadership, but that's besides the point. If Cardano was actually rugged, I think my first thought would be, geez, they created something that looked like it was actually gonna go somewhere. It might sound kind of weird, but if it did go down like that, I would feel pretty comfortable maintaining that I made the right decisions given the information that I was provided and there was nothing that I really could have done to avoid that. And I guess it does give me some comfort knowing that there are people in the space way smarter than me that were also fooled by such an incredibly elaborate scheme. I guess the point of this video is to hopefully provide some encouragement to the people that decided to stick around for the late game. If that's you, I'm betting that you made your decision based on the fundamentals, because that's where I'm coming from. I've learned this lesson way too many times. I actually heard about Bitcoin back in like 2013, 2014 at a debate tournament. I think I was actually on the pro side of cryptocurrency. I don't remember if I won that one. But I can tell you for sure, I definitely don't feel like a winner because I didn't buy into the market until like 2018. And even then, I bought at the top and then got out when the ship was sinking. I've made this mistake time and time again and made decisions based on everything other than the fundamentals. And obviously, that's always been the wrong choice. So in aligning with what has historically been the most reliable investment strategy, I am managing my risk, I'm diversifying my portfolio, and I'm acting on the best information that we have available to us now. Whatever the outcome may be, that's what I'm doing. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of my Cardano-based content every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, remember never to invest more than what you can afford to lose. Learn as much as you can about this space and play for the late game. Thanks so much for watching.